<laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. <laughs> All right, let's get some videos out. I've been working on the landing gear. So here's what I'm doing. A crazy long travel super suspension on the front of Scrappy. And I am going <laughs> way out there. So we're doing twin A arm so that my axles can fully articulate and stay level no matter where the gear is in travel. So typically on a Cub. There can only be so much range of travel, three, six, some go as far as 10 inches of travel. But what happens is the further you go, since the axles are welded to a single A-arm, the tires, as you fly, they hang down and they pivot this way. As you land, they straighten up and kind of scrub outward. And there gets to a point, and it happens between about eight to 10 inches. When you go any further and the tires actually will tuck under the aircraft, if you were to try and get more like 12, 13, 14, we're gonna go <laughs> way north of that. But what would happen is the tires would start to, because they're pivoting on one fulcrum, they would start to tuck under themselves. And if you landed, the rubber would actually bend inward. And then at the same time, the tires are folding out from underneath themselves inward. The suspension needs to move outward and they drag across the ground. It's called scrubbing. So there's a reason why, two primary reasons why Cubs kind of stop in a six, eight inch range in travel. And then beyond that, it gets harder and harder to make them efficient. Uh, that's one. The second is the prop would hit. So I'm fixing all that. When I built my belly pod, I dropped it really low. Some of you really smart guys said, hey, you don't need to put that extra big tube frame in the, in the frame. You can just put a belly pod. You don't need all that extra strength. Well, <laughs> you're right. Except for I was kind of leaving a secret. That subframe underneath my aircraft was for this crazy gear to get a ton more travel. And that's by taking the A-arms from their attach points where the gear is 45 degree angles and moving the attach point down 10 inches into that subframe. That allows me to take the gear, flatten it out, which gives better motion rather than on landing if your gear is really steep when you land, the gear jams the frame and then moves outward, which makes a lot of the geometry hard on getting the shocks to tune in well and the impact. So what I did is I took the A-arms, I moved them down into a sub belly. That also took the engine way up to get me more prop clearance. A-arms down, second set of A-arms, put a pivot knuckle at the end, like trophy truck racing suspension or Baja rails, and then moved the axle in that pivot assembly clear to the bottom, which further gave me more clearance. Now I can have long travel suspension. All right, so twin A-arm long travel suspension. Yeah, it's never been done on an aircraft. However, it has been flight tested. This is what it might look like if I forget to flare. So let's get that built. I'm gonna show you a, a model showing the stress analysis, how I do the engineering behind it. And uh, we're gonna weld it out. We'll at least get that far on the gear. Super excited. Let's get to work. And we're gonna do something crazy with scrappy gear. All right, guys, I'm gonna walk this way and check out this machinery. <laughs> you see you know, some of the machines I've had in my past videos? I'm like a kid in a candy store in here. This is some awesome stuff. And uh, I'm over at a friend's shop. Um, we, do, we do some of this machining at Best Tug, some at another friend's. When we don't have a table big enough, we come here. This is what I need today. 
So this piece of aluminum right here is going to be to make a jig for Scrappy's gear legs. The suspension on Scrappy's front end is so complex with so many parts that have to fit together. I can't have anything off. There's a lot of compound movements going on. And so it's got to be perfect. So I can't just clamp it together and weld it like I could a traditional gear leg. I need it to be absolutely perfect or two moving components at different positions would start to bind. So this piece of aluminum is actually, may not look like scrap, obviously not scrap, you throw in the trash, but that's remnant off another piece I made on Draco a while back. So we're gonna take the other end of that sheet, turn it into a template to weld up Scrappy's new front end and suspension, so. All right guys, it's going absolutely perfect. So I'm starting to get things like my guides bolted down, but I'll show you kind of how this works. I can take this bar that's pre-cut, slide it over, slide it into that bar, slide this bar in against its guide, slide it into that bar, it's all coped together. Take this bar, pull it over to it. You can rotate it around one angle, you can see it doesn't work. If I rotate it the rest of the way, I can pivot it around, line it up, spin it, lock it in, take the next bar, lock it in. And what's really kind of cool, if you look at how this is going together, I have three different bar sizes here. I got this bar, three quarter inch, inch and a half bar, inch and a quarter bar, and they're all on one jig. So you can tell that this bar actually sitting on the original surface perfectly centers it on this size bar. This bar, the groove it goes in is at a different depth than this bar. So it's hard to tell, but all those grooves are different depths to accommodate the size of pipe so that when I put it down, I can clamp everything tight. Three different bars all push straight down, centers all those bars. So lots of little details, but it's gonna make it go really fast and I'll be able to just knock these out. So let's get to work. All right guys, when we were drawing this from the computer, we undersized this only a thousandth of an inch, one to two thousandths, it's about as close as we could cut it. But the reason we did that is so that when we put it together, actually pinches it. If you look at how tight that fit is, I'm not holding it and it can hold that part. So we should be able to get a really strong, clean weld, all the materials in there, because all the cuts are exactly at the angle, but this should go together really well. We'll find out now, because I have not assembled any of it. It has been hours and hours and hours and hours of cutting and drafting and drawing and machining to get this done. There are weird tricks we had to do even along the way. You can see little eighth inch pinholes in here. These are reference lines. Our machine couldn't take this long of a part and rotate it on the fifth axis without this crashing into the table to cut certain holes in it. So we actually had to program in little reference holes, do all the ops on this side, put a reference hole, slide the bar, relocate the reference hole so that it didn't twist when we unclamped it and clamped it, put a new reference hole, run a drill bit through it in the machine, clock it straight, clamp it down, and then do the second op. So some of these parts took three and four ops to get it done, but we'll just burn in these holes. But at the end of the day, we have everything we need. Gosh, I hope this works. <laughs> it's been a lot of work, so let's get it done. We'll see how it goes soon. This is how these snap together. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> a non-welded part, I'm pretty happy. And then that fits in like that. Slide that down there. Slide that over. And you can get an idea of how, twist that, how this starts to go together. <laughs> this is a snap lock, then weld. <laughs> I've had people ask if I would do time lapse sometime. <laughs> it always seems like a pain to set up a camera and then try and get all that footage. So I'm gonna try it for you on a small project, not small, but just bolting this together. So here's my first time-lapse attempt. <laughs>
All right, guys, we got one side done. This is the upper A arm for the other side. It's all bolted, everything's tight, locked in. So let's get it welded and finish this project. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> well, I get excited about <laughs> this thing was hiding from me right in plain sight. So this is remnants, scraps off of building Draco's landing gear with the Twin King shocks. They, for a chromoly piece, you couldn't buy just the amount I needed. I had to buy a whole stick. So this is now going to become Scrappy's front start of Scrappy's front landing gear part. So. I'm gonna go machine it, make some parts, put it together, weld it up. That's work. Scrap parts for Scrappy. Let's get it done. All right, guys. I'm gonna pull this up here and check the fit. So here's my axle. This is the official start of my landing gear cutting parts. So I'm so excited. We've got the two holes cut through the side, making sure these fit in. We did that on the last off. You see those, that slides in there. Then here's the axle. I like you to go from an inch and a quarter up to an inch and a half and go to a heavier wall because Draco, or Scrappy is going to be a bit heavier. Anyway, I need to make sure that this fits in the hole we just cut before we take it out of the fixture. Because of the top, we can tell it to go out a couple thousandths of an inch and make a little more room. So. <laughs> We're not going to cut that anymore. That is absolutely perfect. So I've got the axle in and you can see this bar passing through here. It's actually going to get one of these, which we thinned up in the middle where we don't need the weight. But uh, you can see this bar, we actually had to use calipers and come off the fixture table, which is absolutely flawless, and then pitch it to get the tenths of degrees of toe in I want on the front wheels. If they actually were to track perfectly straight, then the little bit of play that's in a bearing, especially on a 35 inch tall tire, Alaska bush wheel I'm using, it's a big tire and an awesome product. But when they get that big and you got these bearings, they can, if you track it perfectly straight, the tires will wanna walk just a little bit, just a few thousandths on those bearings when they're that big. And I actually want to have just a fraction of a toe in so there's a tiny bit of tension on those tires when you're rolling down a runway that keeps them in and puts a little bit of tension on those bearings so the tires don't want to move and i'm hyper exaggerating that movement but essentially oh so little toe in and that's just for the alignment so we've got that set the axle set there's absolutely no play in that which means we're going to be able to weld this up and know that my alignment is perfect towed exactly the way i want it so we got some welding to do back to work 
All right, guys. So we're getting the new landing gear system welded up. I, I've never been more excited about putting gear on an airplane in my life. So hopefully it works out good. We'll find out. So we've got these machine parts. We're gonna slide these in right there. And uh, that's still hot. And another one down on the bottom. And then we've got this welded out. You can see this is still very hot. This has got one pass on it. We're gonna go over with a second pass. And uh, I just trial fit it on the tires with 35 inch Alaska bush wheels with the 10 inch wheels to make sure that everything mapped out the way the computer said it would. And it did, so we got lucky. <laughs> Get back to work. All right, guys, one down, three to go. This is the lower A arm, so this should, in theory, kind of just snap, and it does, right there. So the way this will work, this pivots up and down right here, and this, ah! I feel like in one hand, my bush wheels. We're trying, here we go. You go right here. That aligned right there. The upper A arm will go over the top. And as the two pivot together, the tire stays straight up and down. So the upper A arm uses another attach point and has a truss web in it that hooks to here. And that truss web is in the middle. One down, three to go. About to work. I, I could not be happier. So. I'm always smiling, but right now I am about ready to explode because this has been a long time coming and we just put one side on. I went ahead and we uh, got one, the lower A arm all burned out the top. I just tacked it and uh, we wanted to see how it fit before we went too far because we have so many parts that all have to interact together that were made at different times. And so to finally assemble it, and uh, see what it looks like and see if it works. Um, it went on without so much as a file or a grinder or sanding. It literally snapped into place, put a couple of tack welds on, and here's the range of motion. You can kind of get an idea. This is the resting position. And the tire stays level all the time. You don't get the scrub as the tire leans on landing. You get more travel. My prop has a half inch more ground clearance on a bottom out than a stock cub. So I have more prop clearance by just a little. And the reason I'm able to do that is normally a cub is this far on the belly. When I designed my new gear, I wanted to get more travel. And to do that without the gear hanging almost straight down, 
I had to lower the belly of the plane, make a web truss system inside that could hold those forces, and then I could have more travel without hitting a prop. So, man, I couldn't be happier. And it, it looks like it weighs a lot. Surprisingly, it's really light. Um, that has to do with the fact that everywhere I could, I used really thin wall. And then there's actually four different gauges of metal in here, depending on where the loads are. So I still need to build my truss web on the top. I'm really excited about that, but there you go. One side down, one to go. Let's throw a tire on it, see how it looks. All right, so this was the final check. Make sure everything worked right. I've already checked that my brake calipers and everything worked when I was uh, welding this up. And uh, right now I just got some all thread in here. I've got to make some custom bolts and get them in. But um, I just had to make sure that the tire wouldn't rub back here near the back of the wing. When we were drawing it on the computer, we got our Alaska bush wheels, which by the way, if you aren't running them, you need to, they're so awesome. They just suck up rocks. But we were drawing them in the computer. And so I got some 29s and some 31s and some 35s. And we're putting straight edges and measuring at different points and then putting them at different pressures to see how much they move. And then watching videos in slow motion to see how much flex and bend in the really rough terrain. And so I gave myself plenty of clearance. You can see it right here. I don't know. I can't wait to try it in the backcountry somewhere, but so far, so good. Let's see uh, how this goes up and down. All right, guys, I don't have time to finish all the gear on this video, but the gear is further along. So what I'm gonna show you on the next video is the stress analysis. I have a lot of people ask me, how do you know how strong it's gonna be? How does it hold up? How do you make sure it's gonna work before you fly it? Well, the answer is I use Similia Works, which is a branch off made by the same guys that brought SolidWorks, and I've loved all the SolidWorks stuff. And I input all the bars, the structural loads, the gauge, the type of material, chromoly, and then I can put loads on it, X, Y, Z axis, and I can tell how many pounds of force, how I want it applied, what direction I want it applied, and I'm gonna put all of that, and I'll go into it in another video. I usually don't, because sometimes I, I think it could get a little boring, but a lot of you have asked, um, and it's not boring to me, so maybe it isn't boring to you guys. I think it's the coolest software ever, because I know how this gear is gonna react when I hit a hard landing, a complete crater it in, max G loading, and I know it before I even fly it. So I'm gonna show more of that and we'll go through all the sequences to get that done. But the gear, as you see in the starting clip of this video, was missing some of the upper A-arm structure. Uh, I'll put a quick picture of kind of what that looks like as I'm starting to attach the wing as part of the front gear. <laughs> That's right, I'm building a wing out of my front gear. So that's coming up as well. Come back, check it out. And uh, I hope you like my videos. If you do, like, subscribe, follow along, tell other people the craziness that is Scrappy Build and uh, come back and join me. We'll see you soon.